Are you writing a book and sometimes wonder, how will I publish my book? Or are you someone who feels a tingle down your spine when you think about writing your first book and holding it in your hands? If you answered yes to one of these questions, then this episode is for you. In this three-part episode, we present the main publishing paths, discuss their pros and cons, and help you decide, how will I publish my book? Hello and welcome to my channel where I talk about books, creativity and the brain. My name is A. David Singh, author and dog dad who writes fantasy stories set in Magical Rome universe. Aspiring authors often ask me, how should I publish my book? The answer is not straightforward. It really depends on your life circumstances, personal preferences, and more importantly, on your creative goals. As of recording this episode in 2023, there are two ways you can publish your book. In the first option, a publishing house acquires the rights to publish your book. Such traditional publishing houses have been around for centuries. And till a few years ago, traditional publishing was considered the only viable publishing path. At its core, traditional publishing is a two-step process in which you, the author, first finds a literary agent who is willing to represent your book. Once you sign with that literary agent, they will pitch your book to publishing houses in the hope of getting it accepted. When your literary agent's pitch is successful, the publishing house will offer you a deal to buy the rights to publish your book. Then it is up to you and your agent to negotiate that deal. And when you're ready, you sign a contract with the publishing house. The second option is called self-publishing in which authors retain all the rights to their books and they publish books on their own. The earliest known example of self-publishing is Charles Dickens. In 1843, Dickens, dissatisfied with the earnings that his publishers gave him, self-published a story called A Christmas Carol. The initial print run consisted of 6,000 copies and even though his book sold well, Dickens barely broke even, having spent all his money on printing and publicity. Over the next one and a half centuries, self-publishing reared its head in fits and starts, but none of the authors found it a sustainable way to earn a living. However, all that changed with the release of Amazon Kindle in 2007. Over the next few years, this handheld device disrupted the publishing industry and led to the robust publication of ebooks. In the 20 teens, self publishing went mainstream by embracing newer technologies and practices and extended to formats beyond ebooks like paperbacks, hardcover books, and even audiobooks. In today's climate, self-publishing holds a strong appeal amongst authors because it has proven itself to be an efficient way to publish books. The main attraction of self-publishing lies in its ability to tear down the barriers that exist between authors and readers in the traditional publishing industry. With this broad overview of traditional and self-publishing, let's dive into their pros and cons and help you decide, should I publish my book through a publishing house or should I publish my book on my own? Click on the video that pops up on your screen or on the link below and I'll see you soon.